noticed this before, and then again, maybe you haven't, but think for a moment about all the pictures of Jesus that you've seen. You know, the majority of them depict a picture of a white man, a white guy, a white Jesus. And that doesn't really add up because, you know, Jesus was Jewish. He was born in ancient Judea 2,000 years ago. Jesus was probably a short guy, a skinny guy with, you know, curly hair, dark eyes, olive skin. He probably didn't look much like the images that we have of Jesus today. And in the face of that, many people are asking questions about whatever happened to black Jesus? What happened that we don't have images of a black Jesus? Well, today I want to talk about some of that. And as I talk about that, I want to invite you to, to subscribe to the channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. You know, the early followers of Jesus didn't present us with a description of Jesus. They never recorded what he looked like. Of course, there were no photographs, and Jesus didn't sit for a portrait or anything like that. So we have to look back in history to see how Jesus began to be portrayed. And it's interesting that the first image we have comes from about 250 years after Jesus died. That's in the third century. And in that image, what we're left with is a picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Jesus as the Good Shepherd was a very, very popular image among the early followers of Jesus in the first, first and second and third century. This was probably the most common image of Jesus. And in this image, Jesus is dressed in Roman attire and a tunic. He looks like a young guy that's from Rome or Greece or from that Mediterranean time period. He has hair that looks very Mediterranean. It's tight curls and, you know, you've seen pictures like this of, in, in different settings. And he definitely doesn't look Middle Eastern. He looks Mediterranean. And I think that why that's true is that this image comes from the Roman Empire and people imagine Jesus to be like them. So that the image of Jesus is someone who would fit into the Roman Empire at that day. The next two images we have come from the third and fourth century, they're a little later. And again, Jesus is pictured wearing a Roman tunic and his features, his facial features, his hair, his coloration is very Mediterranean. It takes until the 6th century from an icon that we have from an Egyptian monastery that we see Jesus looking sort of Middle Eastern, sort of Egyptian. And it's an icon of Christ Pantocrator. Now, Pantocrator is a Greek term that essentially means Lord of the Universe. And this Icon is an image that's frequently found in Greek Orthodox and Russian Orthodox churches today, up in the dome. But this image portrays Jesus as probably close to a middle-aged man, looking very wise, but he has distinctive features that seem more Middle Eastern or more Egyptian. It's important to remember, and maybe you didn't know this at all, but between the 8th and 9th century, there was a movement to destroy all the religious images in Christianity. It was believed that images shouldn't exist because people would be prone to worship images. So they tried to get rid of all of them. And churches were left very bare with very little artwork, at least not in uh, artwork that was images of people. And because of this, very little artwork from early in Christian history survived. In time, of course, that changed and people began creating images. And they created lots of images at the end of the first millennium. And by that time, Christianity was very much wedded to the governments of whatever region it was. You know, in, in the Western Empire, there was the church in Rome and the Roman church, the Pope, you know, was involved in the selection and coronation of kings and, and would often be the person who 
uh, crowned the king. In Eastern Orthodoxy, the Orthodox Church was very much intertwined with the government and very present within the court. In Ethiopia, there was also a church-state relationship that was, was alive and well. And in this, because of that connection between the church and state, images of Jesus began to emerge as images of the dominant power, which is really an interesting thing because Jesus was clearly against the dominant power of his day. But Jesus was intertwined with this, these power dynamics. And that continued through the colonial era. And most of the colon colonial powers, of course, were European. These Western European nations took their images of Jesus, and as they were colonizing territories, they brought missionaries who presented people in those areas with the white European Jesus. And so the white European Jesus took over the world because European colonists were taking over the world. Of course that would be the case. While the value in the early, among the early followers of Jesus was to portray Jesus as being someone like us, looking like us, looking, taking on our culture and our nature. That wasn't what colonial powers wanted. Colonial powers wanted to associate images of God with the colonial power. So they wanted Jesus to look like the colonists, like, like the colonizers. And they surely didn't want Jesus to look anything like the people who were being taken over. And it's from that that we have this heritage of Jesus looking white. If there was the possibility of Jesus looking native, indigenous, brown skin, black skin, that would have, you know, shaken the rule of the colonial power. Now, we're past the age of colonialism, at least in a formal way. We're still living with the repercussions of colonialism. And one of those repercussions is that we're left with these images of a white Jesus. And clearly that isn't who Jesus was. But we're never going to know what Jesus looked like. We can take our best guesses. But I think, for those who are followers of Jesus, that it's important to consider that we need to imagine Jesus as being someone like us, someone who was born into the world to bring divinity into the world, so that when we encounter others, we are also encountering the Christ. That means it's important for us to be open to images of a black Jesus, a, a Latino Hispanic Jesus, an indigenous Jesus, an Asian Jesus, and yes, even a white Jesus, because Jesus takes on all of our life. That's the fundamental Christian belief, that Jesus comes in to be one like us, was born to be one like every one of us. When we fail to do that, I think we're committing a horrible sin because we're saying implicitly that Jesus wasn't really incarnated into the full human condition that instead Jesus was born for some people and not for others. And that's a serious problem. So I invite you to begin to consider and imagine and look for images of Jesus appearing in very different ways, from cultures that may be very different from your own, and to be open to where those images can lead your imagination as you begin to grow in an understanding of who Jesus may be for you and for the world. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and know that I appreciate your time on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a really great day.